bring up my own uh, notes. There you go. So um, uh, I've been working with um, the, the company whose logo you see here and uh, that I've been working with for the past year uh, on various wonderful uh, museum experiences. Um, I've been there for a year now, and previously I was working on IIIF and the development of a uh, IIIF enabled um, uh, uh, streaming platform for Europeana um, at my previous job at a, a wonderful cultural institution here uh, in the Netherlands. Um, the next slide, please. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, who we are, what, what is Q42, a little bit about what is Micro and how Micro links out links to IIIF. Um, I'm going to tell you briefly about how we serve uh, museum collections, um, how we use Micro and uh, and some of the IIIF compatibility comp comp uh, to enable mu museum storytelling, uh, and give you a, a very brief list of, of takeaways. Um, next slide, please. So uh, we're Q Q42. We're about 80 people. Uh, we're a, a tech bureau based in The Hague and Amsterdam. And we work for various industries, various sectors. Um, but we're also lucky enough to have a number of clients from the museums and cultural sectors. Um, the company has existed for about 20 years. And, and at least 16 of those have been spent working with museums um, with those projects, we've, we've won a number of prizes, Grammys, Webbies, you name it, uh, which is also wonderful that people see, see it and really sort of uh, um, uh, appreciate those experiences. And um, a lot of those experiences that we build specifically for museums are powered by uh, Micro or have more and more becoming powered by uh, Micro. So uh, next slide, please. Um, the Micro usage, usage, how it started and, and how it developed was really through um, a number of projects with a variety of clients uh, originally. Um, next slide, please. This is going to be a lot of clicking, Josh. I'm sorry. Um, so originally, uh, Mikio came about by a collaboration with the broadcaster um, and a number of uh, uh, cultural projects that we did together with them and with various museums. Um, and over the past few years, we've really been uh, expanding that uh, user base, uh, not just for people in education and publishers, but there's about six more, Josh. Um, people in, uh, from municipalities, various NGOs, political parties, libraries, film festivals, space agencies, and, and maybe even more. And so what this, what this tells us, and, and, and I'll, I'll, we'll come to that conclusion at the end of the talk, but um, storytelling and, and platforms that enable people to do uh, uh, storytelling by, way, uh, by ways of hyper-resolution uh, images is really something that is a, a, a broad need. There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of sectors and a lot of uh, uh, people out there that really want to uh, use the capabilities of the modern web um, to tell stories specifically around uh, high resolution uh, images, um, 2D, 360, you name it. Um, Mikio got started in, next slide please, uh, 2015, uh, which is the first launch as a kind of a passion project. And as soon as uh, Marcel announced the, 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 the launch of Mikio, um, David Haskia, who was then the technical director of Europeana, was immediately on the case saying, hey, is this IIIF compliant? And um, I was going back to the, the history of some of the, the internal messaging. The, the original response was, what the hell is IIIF? Uh, and over the years, that, that question has been asked a number of times by more and more and more people uh, until next slide, please. Uh, in 2019, uh, Marcel announced full IIIF compatibility for, uh, for Micrio. Um, and what that means um, in uh, uh, more specifically is that um, uh, Micro has now 100% uh, enabled the image API number 3.0 and uh, has enabled uh, largely the presentation API to version 2.1. Um, and then there's a number of, of storytelling uh, uh, functionalities uh, that are available in Micro, but that can't, that can't necessarily be mapped to uh, some of the IIIF. Uh, uh, standards. And so before, before then, before Micro was IIIF enabled, we were doing some of the, you know, the tiling and the, the, the resizing and the cropping, all of those things that, that IIIF enables by um, closed source uh, and, and sometimes end of, end of life surfaces. And so having an, um, a, a, a standard that was open and that had an open protocol to do so was, was very helpful for the things that we wanted to build uh, on top. Uh, of those functionalities within within Micro. Um, next slide, please. Mm, and so 
to give you a very brief uh, uh, intro, so Micro is a bit of is a, is a standalone service. Um, in the examples that I'm going to uh, very briefly show you today, uh, it's been fully sort of built into uh, external websites, but it can be used as a as a standalone storytelling pl uh, uh, platform, um, or pe people can embed it in their own. You can embed it in your website as is, or you can sort of add some extra layers of styling to really make it your own. Um, and what it is, it's, it's a hyper-resolution uh, storytelling enabler, as I would say. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a, um, uh, what you see, the dots in the images are markers, and every marker is what in IIIF lingo would be an annotation. Uh, but for editors to, to add various layers of information and storylines on top of it. You, uh, users can, can can use those markers uh, uh, on their own uh, uh, on, at their own speed at their own will. Uh, you just click it and read it, or click it and, and add audio to it, uh, or you can have a whole a whole tour uh, around it. And over the years, a number of um, uh, functionalities have been added to that, such as positional audio, so every every marker can have specific uh, uh, sound effects when you hover over an image or, or in a, even in a, in a 360 area. Um, you can embed uh, media into it. Um, you can have scripted uh, camera tours across an image or even across various images. Um, and so besides all that, it's also a cloud-based IIIF image server and viewer. So it's, it's, it's a service. Um, you, uh, in order to use it, you, you take a license, but you don't have to hassle about uh, the, the, the whole uh, management of it. Um, and uh, it has it, it comes, the service comes with its own storage, but it can also be connected to your own storage or even uh, potentially to your own IIIF server if, that's, if that would be uh, a request. So that's in a nutshell what uh, Mikio uh, tries to do, and so I wanted to to talk about the two ways that we that we that we use it. One is to really serve um, next slide, please. Um, the entirety of specific museum collections, and um, at the moment there's there's uh, three that do, um, uh, two of which are. Um, uh, uh, for, for two of those, we, we have built sort of a bit of a, a custom connection. There's a the Van Gogh Museum uh, in, here in Amsterdam and the Rijksmuseum, uh, literally physically separated about 200 meters uh, at the, the, the museum plan in, in Amsterdam. Um, so both of those use in the in micro in the back end, and then we serve the images through by, by way of, uh, of a custom CMS. Um, and the Philadelphia Museum of Art, who uses the, the, the micro uh, collections properties as is. So micro has a dashboard with, with, with which uh, museums can, um, uh, can can manage the entirety of all the, the image collections that they want to make publicly available. That's a big uh, exclamation mark there, those parts of the collection that they want to be seen, that they want to be, to be made publicly available uh, from within the micro environment. Next slide, please. Um, I'm going to rapidly skip this uh, for time. Well, very briefly, so what we've done for some of the some for for some of those for the the Rice Museum and the Van Gogh is added a a proxy server. Um, Micro is all about speed, so it uses uh, uh, WebGL WebAssembly. Uh, make sure that that the delivery of of the high resolution uh, images goes as fast as possible, even on older devices, older browsers, um, and and poor connections. Um, and part of that is also uh, making sure that the delivery of all the the tiles and and or, and cutouts. Is as fast as possible, and up until now, we've we've done so by a, a custom proxy server uh, that makes sure that we don't have to sort of resize or recalculate specific crops if that's already been been asked for by a user. Um, and it looks like as of today, Marcel announced that we can now do the, the server sounds server side, so that we don't no longer need this this custom implementation. Next slide, please. Um, so for uh, the, the Van Gogh and uh, and Rijks Museum, what we what we enable in um, in in our CMS. So this is a bit separate from but building on the, the micro feature, features and building on what IIIF uh, there allows um, is a variety of ways to really showcase the images in the way that they should be uh, seen by an, uh, allowing spe very specific crops and allowing uh, uh, setting a very specific focus point so that whenever no matter what kind of device you see it on, whether it's a, a, a mobile or a, a 4K uh, resolution monitor, you always get this high resolution image um, delivered to you the way that it should. Next slide, please. Um, so I wanted to, to demo two stories, but uh, because of the display reasons, I'll just, I'll just name them and, and, and tell you about uh, what, I, what I like about them. Next slide, please. Um, 
Things That Talk is a platform that integrates micro functionality uh, to uh, tell the, the stories of uh, student research into objects. And those objects can be museum objects, but it can also be uh, random contemporary uh, materials. Um, and what things that talk do does is um, uh, use mostly the, 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 the functionality of Micro to have a tour and a step, step through the various angles, the various stories that can be told around one thing. So you have, you always have one thing that, that powers a variety of stories around it. Um, some of those stories also uh, start with like a 360 image of a room and you can really sort of zoom into that. Um, coming back a little bit to a talk that Marcel gave to the museums community for IIIF just a couple of months ago, he, uh, he was asked, uh, you know, what would be handy to have in the IIIF uh, API support for, for, for those 360 image experiences would be really something because we see that that's, that's coming more and more to the fore. Um, things I talk also uses linked data, but that's a whole uh, other story. Next slide, please. Um, for the slavery exhibit, which is a, a, a high profile and, uh, I think, and, and as an, an important and sensitive topic uh, uh, to speak of that opened just this month uh, at the Rijksmuseum, uh, we developed a new format in which we have, so Mitra already had uh, video tours, which is a, uh, where you, you are taken to various camera positions on, uh, on an image. Um, and with a voiceover that, that really sort of takes you through the narrative. Um, and we've now linked those various tours to various uh, images so that, so that uh, in the slavery exhibit, you can, you can sort of, it's a, it's a, it's a culmination of all the, the, the various functionalities that Micro has to tell a story through different uh, angles and platforms um, and, and Zoom levels. Next slide, please. Um, so very briefly, um, Triple AI API helps us unleash very large collections to the web. And by very large, we mean in the case of the Rice Museum, that's over 460,000 images at the moment. Um, we, we are noticing more and more and more uh, that museums really want Triple AF. Uh, we see it passing by in, in requests for proposals. And um, when we talk to people in museums, uh, even sometimes if some of the colleagues don't always know that they already have Triple AF enabled in their own uh, um, collections. And um, it's not just the museums that have stories, but there's really a, a broad um, uh, demand for it. So that's it for me. Uh, you can get in touch for questions. Next slide, please. Oh, yes. Um, free trials are available for Micro. And if you ask Marcel nicely and you need more time to extend that free trial, that's, that's probably, uh, probably, probably possible uh, most of the time. Uh, my name is Erwin. You can reach me here. And you can reach Marcel on the next slide. Uh, or follow him on Twitter via Mitrio. Um, I hope there's one or two questions uh, in the one or two minutes that we have left. And thanks, Josh, for your technical support. Thank you. Good, uh, good, good staying loose. Um, let me unshare and let me just take a look and see. Uh, I couldn't see while that was happening. Um, yeah, we have a quick minute, especially because we're up against a break. If anybody has a question, I don't see one in the Q&A. Um, but that was great covering a lot of grounds uh, very quickly. Uh, so if you have a question, um, add it to the Q&A box or the chat. Otherwise, oh, here's one. Um, how has your work with multiple museums aided collaboration between them? Maybe a quick. Oh, that's, a, that, that's a wonderful question uh, to end on, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, so what we what we try to what we try internally um, is that we have various various teams, um, and so for ourselves, we're trying to sort of unite them a little bit. Um, a, a bit of sort of as as a company, what we like to say uh, the museum clients is that they get some of the benefits of us working with with large companies, uh, you know, who have the the funds to to do technical innovation at a level that some cultural institutions can. Um, and so we also tried within our team to exchange that. Um, but that also means that so we're talking to those different clients and they're talking to each other. And so we try to sort of keep that a loop that when we implement something in our in the CMS or in, in Micro, uh, that another museum can also make, make use of those of those developments. And so the, the way that Micro came about in itself is, is an example of that because every project added to the core of what Micro as a platform could offer. Could offer. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, that's a great answer. Um, I think we've uh, we've we've just hit the end of the session time, um, but really appreciate your staying loose. I, I hope that worked out okay. Um, thank you to Erwin for presenting uh, on Micrio. Thanks, folks, for joining us. Um, I'm going to end the recording here, but we can uh, 
keep the questions in the chat going in the Whova platform if or when if you're still available to uh, sure. answer questions there or post links. Um, yep. But yeah, thanks awesome. everybody, and we'll see you after the break.